Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to another episode of Soccer.com Live. A very interesting day of World Cup action has come upon us. Uh, could have been Messi's potential one of his last games for Argentina. Uh, France was able to squeak out a win. And, of course, Denmark was able to take it to, Pro, or to Australia. Uh, they ended in a tie. But we're going to recap all of that and more, as well as go through some of the best product you saw on field today as well as have a giveaway at the very end, so make sure you guys stay tuned to figure out the password for that. This is another episode of Soccer.com Live. Hello, everybody, and welcome to the Soccer.com Live studio. I'm Cole here with Adam and Martin. Thank you guys very much for joining me. Another eventful day of World Cup action has come upon us and given us uh, some interesting stuff to talk about. Uh, I guess the initial thing to mention today, of course, is going to be the Argentina-Croatia game. Uh, could it, might have been one of the last times we see Leo Messi in an Argentina jersey? I hope not. Um, you know, we've, uh, it obviously was a disappointing result for Argentina. It really puts them um, up against it to qualify now. Um, would take a massive effort and probably some other results going their way um, to, to get through. I mean, Messi is the best player in the world, in my opinion, and clearly is the best player on that team. They just haven't figured out how to play with set him. up yeah. a, a team around him. Um, and let's be honest, his supporting cast was just not up to the challenge today and hasn't been for a, a while For a now. long time, yeah. We talked the other day about them looking really really kind of dodgy in in qualifying and just scraping through and it's showing now yeah i i i think we saw some of the players that maybe we held in high regard in the past like mascherano and we have guys like Di maria who wasn't even deemed good enough to play today in a game they needed to get a result i just don't think the supporting cast is there you've got pavon you've got uh metza you've got Tagliafico on the field for Argentina and they're supposed to be World Cup challengers yeah. I, you can't you could put Messi in a high school team and he'd do better than he would now with Argentina uh, I, I won't argue with that I, I, do, I will say it was very obvious today that Messi was almost just kind of on an island um, his, his supporting cast was not willing to almost play with him or they were trying too hard to play with him and it, it showed because you, you saw later in the game Messi had to drop so far back to even get the ball on his feet. And it, it's going forward. Messi, of course, is most lethal, most destructive around that 18. And you had nobody that, could, that knew how to combine with him. It even looked like Mascherano didn't even know or couldn't even remember how to play with him today. It was, just, it was very disappointing to see. Um, but full, I mean, full major props to Croatia for being able to pull out three points and keep their heads for the most part through the game. Oh, yeah. It's, it's not like this was an upset. No, I, I think I think all of us could have sat here yesterday and said that while we wanted to see Messi perform, Croatia winning was probably the more likely scenario. You had magic from Modric there on the second goal to kind of sink yes. to sink Argentina. They had no shot to get back in it after that. It's very uh, impressive seeing the two midfielders for Croatia playing for two big rivals come together and play as well as they do on the same field. Yeah, for me, Rakitic was probably man of the match in the end, especially getting that goal at the end. He was the dynamo for them in the midfield, got them driving forward, really freed up a lot of space for Modric to work in. Um, so I thought that they really worked well together. They were just a, a better overall team. I mean, I, I think we all sat here and, and thought the same. We did. Uh, I'd be really interested to know what the Excuse viewers yes. think about first Messi um, and Argentina. Like, do you, would you put more blame for the Argentina's predicament right now on Messi not performing to the level he can or the Argentina team that he plays with? And what do you think of Croatia? Do they have a chance to really go far to like, I think, I think they're potentially like, potentially it's like a semi-final team. They are, they are a really quality team front to back. So they could, they could challenge any of the big teams, I think. Kind of a dark horse in the tournament. Yeah. Uh, moving on, of course, Croatia winning that game 3-0. Um, moving on to the well, earlier game in the day, the midday game with France and Peru. Uh, France, of course, squeaking out a 1-0 win there. Maybe, probably should have split points if we're looking at it just purely performance-based. 
Um, I do have to say, I mean, Peru came out for World Cup rookies as they are for 36 years. They came out and played much better against a powerhouse France team than I expected them to. And France, I think, looked a lot more disjointed than I would have thought they had been by this stage in the World Cup. I think in the first half we saw France being the favorites, uh, really taking the game to Peru. Griezmann was really good going forward. He had a couple chances and eventually was the catalyst for their goal, uh, for that Mbappe goal. But in the second half, Peru really kind of came out of their shell and were extremely aggressive in terms of ball control, in terms of chance creation. Cuevas had that great, I think it was Cuevas had that 35 yarder that tipped off the top of the bar that had beaten Lloris, he wasn't gonna get that. So I think in another match, Peru would probably get points or maybe even a win, but this is what it's about. It's about getting results, and France right now are able to uh, keep getting the, the free able, points. Yeah, able to just squeak out wins. I mean, if, if they're going to keep doing that, though, it could be something, as long as they're getting the wins, could see them go somewhat deep in the tournament. Um, but I do think it's something that might worry a few France fans, the fact that they haven't truly meshed well. Um, I mean, it's the second game of the World Cup still, but you've had all this time through training, through friendlies. You'd expect maybe more of a cohesive unit by this point. Hopefully in the third game they're able to shore some things up and hopefully turn it around for the further game. Uh, of course, we have this morning's game, Denmark versus Australia. I actually thought that was probably one of the more entertain like somewhat entertaining games of the day. Um, some good back and forth action, tied one to one in the end. Um, we did see VAR come out again and be used to call a handball in Australia's favor. Um, I want to get your guys' opinion on that. Just do you so the play was is the defender went up and as he was going to head the ball, the ball hit off his hand. It wasn't going on frame or anything. It wasn't going to be a goal, but it did hit off his hand. Is it something that should be called back for the PK? Or is it something you look at something like that and it's not called usually anywhere else? Just let it go. I, I don't know. My, I, I'm uh, of the opinion that those are really hard to call as a referee. I always err on the side of of the um, team that it's called on, and prefer that the defender or the the person who allegedly handballed it to get the benefit of the doubt, unless it's clear that it was a deliberate handball. Um, that one for me, you know, you see them given, but I, I wouldn't. I would say that looked more kind of accidental. I mean, his hand was kind of up. Maybe you would say in an unnatural position, but when you're jumping for the ball, your hand kind of goes all say, over is the there place. Any real natural looked, position for your hands? Yeah, it looked like the time it took from the ball to get to his hand was such a short amount of time that, and his hand didn't really make a movement towards the ball, in my opinion. So I probably wouldn't have given it. But, but it was overall a very, I mean, very entertaining game. I mean, back and forth. I think Denmark had some great moves. Of that the beautiful goal. goal. Oh, I mean, I mean fantastic. Ericsson just. Actually, the way that their front line was linking up with Ericsson just behind, again, they're another team that I think um, are one of those kind of smaller European teams that actually did really well in qualification and probably doesn't get the same attention that a Spain um, or a France does or a Germany for that matter, but could be potentially like a quarterfinal or semifinal team if things go the right way. Well, when you have a player like Christian Ericsson kind of pulling the strings from the midfield, I feel like that can also give you a little bit more of a boost because, I mean, he is a very high-quality player. And even if you have players in front of him that maybe aren't as high-quality as Christian Eriksen, the way he moves and the way he opens up space through the middle is going to relieve a lot of the pressure off the forwards to hopefully just have a little easier job just either setting him back up to strike like he did today or hopefully just finishing a ball past the keeper. So uh, let us know what you guys thought and uh, maybe what was the most interesting match of the day for you guys. Of course, if you guys do have any other thoughts or questions, feel free to leave them in the live chat portion here. We'll have a few coming through uh, as the episode goes on. We are going to take a quick break, but we, we will be right back with you guys with one of my favorite things in the goal tracker. So we'll see you soon. An opening in the defense and achieved the hat trick. <laughs> it's one of the tournament's great goals. And this man is rampant now. He might have just won the cup for Germany. Hello, ladies and gentlemen, and welcome back to Soccer.com Live with the Goal Tracker. 
Today we have updated everything as best we could, and sitting on top is the Nike Mercurial Silo at, I believe, 23 goals. Absolutely incredible how far they've distanced themselves this early in the tournament. In second place, with seven goals, we have the Adidas Predator line. In third place, with six goals, we have the Adidas X line. Not too bad for a top three. Coming down below those, we have three goals for the Hypervenom, and we have one goal apiece for the Tiempo, Puma Future, and Nike Magista. Two goals for the Magista line, actually. Just remember that from Ericsson's goal today. Two goals from the Magista line, so that puts them up even one higher. Uh, I do want to take a moment real quick and tell you guys about some of the promotions we have going on right now at Soccer.com. Uh, of course, probably one of my favorite ones going on right now is our foot right now is our foot our footwear deal. Um, excuse me. 20% off our footwear right now. If you are a Gold Club member, that also means you get 20% off on top of the 10% off. So look at joining Gold Club if you guys aren't already a member. 20% um, off the footwear with the code PLUS20. I highly recommend checking it out. Some great deals on there right now. I mean, a few Predators, a few Mercurials as well. Um, you can find a lot of great boots, including all of the World Cup boots that you're seeing on field right now. Go check all those out. Uh, on top of that, we have another deal for the official World Cup match ball, the Adidas Telstar. Uh, WC Ball 20 gets you an extra 20% off the already on sale Telstar, bar, Telstar balls. Uh, they're up to 30% off right now, but with WC Ball 20, you'll get an extra 20% on top of that. Puts the official match ball right around $96. Fantastic deal if you guys are able to grab that. Um, and especially look at some of the customization that we will be adding shortly to the World Cup match balls. Yep. Uh, but we're going to move on to some of the product we saw on field today. And I want to take a look at the Nike Magista Opus that Christian Eriksen was wearing during his goal or for his goal today. Um, really that controller's boot, the playmaker's boot. Um, not, not something you see maybe too many players wearing nowadays. Um, but it's definitely one that's kind of set up for that control and that general in the midfield. Yeah, I think a lot of the players who maybe wore a CTR 360 in the past uh, kind of made that transition to Tiempo this year. But you have guys like Iniesta, you have guys like Christian Eriksen who are still wearing this. And I really like the, the textured upper. So it gives you a little bit more uh, control on the ball, especially in wet conditions. Um, yeah, I, I mean, I think, I think it's definitely a midfielder's boot, especially when you look at the sole plate and that 360 pattern in the in the um, in the stud pattern. I like that you referenced the CTR 360 because I mean that's actually where Kangalite was really born and really began and became introduced into Nike's lines. And I mean they've continued using it since then. And I mean it's been a very popular material for them, especially on their more creator style boots. And I mean the Magista Opus. I mean technically it is the what is it what is it now Magista Obra Elite non DF. Um, I think it, that's I mean, correct. Yeah, we'll, we'll go with that long tongue twister of a name. But, I mean, it's, it's, it's got all the qualities you want from leather. It's very soft, it's plush, it has a great fit, but it doesn't really stretch as much. The water uptake is very, very minimal, if at all. And Nike's applied their ACC, their all conditions control, to the top of it. And plus, with this, you can do some things that you can't really with leather and add that artificial texture to it. So, like you said, you just get a little more control in the end. Which I think, I mean, it suited Christian Eriksen perfectly today. And plus, I mean, that soul plate, that soul plate. is fantastic. <laughs> all, all the JDI soul plates are Yeah, incredible. the soul plates, and I mean, even in the light here, I don't. you guys probably can't see it, we can here in the studio, but with the light here, you get a nice, like, pearl finish off that white upper. Just looks absolutely fantastic. Easily probably one of the best-looking JDI boots outside of the Tiempo, just right. because I'm a sucker for white and red. <laughs> but, I mean, you know how it goes. Uh, I am going to take another moment real quick and tell you about some of the World Cup accessory deals that we have going on right now. Uh, buy two, get one free. The code is one free. That's including everything right now. Some Panini stuff, uh, scarves, some, a few Federation balls, um, some little trinkets like this nice little World Cup trophy that we have here. Um, you guys can check all that, um, you guys can check all that out right now at soccer.com. Uh, but actually, speaking of Panini, those are on sale right now on our website, so you guys can check out some of those. We actually have a box in the studio. We're actually going to do something a little different today. Uh, I want to see who can create the best five-a-side team All right. with our Panini albums. So I'm going to give two packs apiece. Okay. We're going to open these real quick, and we're going to see who can create the best five-a-side team. Uh, of course, if you guys have, think you have a better five-a-side team, let us know in the comments section. Uh, definitely let us know what you guys oh, think of Panini. Oh, 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 oh. oh my gosh, looking at yours, I think you might be winning today. 
Okay. Is it bad good. if I don't recognize half of these players? I may need players? another pack because I've got a lot of team photos. <laughs> I'm feeling Can good. I play a whole team? Oh no, you, you get you get to have the whole team of Poland and the whole team of Morocco. As, okay, great, yeah. great. I might not recognize a few of my players. My oh, team is amazing. Okay. Let's see. All right, see. I think Adam might be winning this. All right, one. yeah, I've got my team. I've got no defenders, but I think that's okay. Oh gosh. Sweden. Definitely have no goalkeepers. Oh my. Okay, all right. I think uh, I'm mine's a bit kind of defensive, <laughs> but uh, I don't have a goalkeeper. I, we don't need no, a goalkeeper. Okay, fine. I think I might just be tossing random players onto the field here. <laughs> all right, oh, yikes, so, yeah, so, okay, yikes. so what, what have we got here? Can we, can we open up another pack? Each? Uh, Come on. We've got plenty there, Cole. All right, all right, all right, all right. Another pack. All right, one more thank pack. You. One more pack. Do you just love opening these packs? Yeah, no, it's it's one of, it brings me back to when I used to collect some of those like trading cards back in the day. Okay. Oh, now it well. Ooh. Okay. Ooh. Oh, come on. Alex Oxley Chamberlain. <laughs> Definitely <laughs> in the England outside. squad. He's got a great view from the couch. Okay. All right. Uh, Eric M. I am going to answer your question today. No, I felt like doing my hair today. So uh, no Yushanka today. That's fair. Felt, felt nice. That's fair. It, feel, it feels good. Oh, I'm okay. I got my keeper now. All right. All right. You know what? I think I'm just going to go with my last pack for my five aside team. Okay. My last pack is giving me my five aside. I think I'm just going to go with that. All right, Cole. You. Let's. Uh, let's. Let's. Oh, see, so let's hear your I'm side. going first. Okay. Yeah. Alrighty. So first off, again, I have. I have no idea. Uh, Pontus Janssen for Sweden. Excellent. He's in my lineup. Uh, he's, going, he's going straight in the lineup. Yeah. Straight in the lineup. Uh, Camille Grosicki. Oh, yep. Grosicki. From yep. Poland. Okay. He's in my lineup. Shin Shakiri is in my lineup. I have Fabianski as my keep. And Griezmann as my top striker. Okay. So thank you, my last pack of Panini, for helping me out there. So for mine, I don't really have a keeper. So I've got a sweeper keeper, Nemanja Matic. <laughs> He's a big boy. He's a big boy. I think he can stop some shots. <laughs> you just picture him. <laughs> yeah. Uh, De Gea's hurt. Matic Fair in. Fair enough. Fair enough. Fernandinho in the midfield, that dynamo, that, that hard oh tackler. Gosh. Then you got the attacking three, which is just Sun Hyun Min, Timo Werner, how did you manage Javier all these? Hernandez, Chicharito. I think my teams are going to wipe the floor. I think with you. Yours. I think he may have won. I think he may have won. Well, okay. You so got some legends I've got on that some, team. Got some, I'm also going to go with a uh, a defender as a goalkeeper here with uh, Otamendi. The way he played today, like, though, yeah, I don't know. He can just slide in and uh, probably better than Willy Caballero, though. Then we've got uh, Rafael Varane. <laughs> Uh, just um, kind of, you know, holding down that uh, stopper role. Uh, we'll go with uh, Ki Sung Young on the wing with Sadio, Ma Sadio Mane on the other side. And uh, Kaisuke Honda, just in the middle, just doing everything. <laughs> bring, <laughs> right. bring, next to bring it, bring it, bring it back to the glory years. Asking yeah, so, you know, I'm, I'm, I think... We'll go with Adam's yeah, team probably guys. there. He got, I he think got Adam, Adam, Adam yeah. will win that one. This definitely. is this is skill as a general manager. Lots lots of time spent playing uh, FIFA career mode have prepared me for this. Oh man! So now you know. Yeah, obviously, if you want to get your own stickers, head to soccer.com, search Penny, you'll find them all on sale. Definitely, and of course, it is a buy two get one free right now. So check all of those out. We will be right back with you guys after a short break with uh, another one of my favorite segments, the best of social from the day. Everybody and welcome back to the Soccer.com Live Studio. Cole here with Adam and Martin, and we're going to take a look, a look now at some of the best of social from today's action. Our first one coming to our first one coming to us from Copa Ninety. Uh, I think this one might might explain some of the frustrations from Messi today uh, with that nice little Braun Braun image from <laughs> from the NBA Finals. But yeah. uh, I, I feel like this kind of exactly is what Messi's feeling right now. Just just frustration with yeah. everybody Guys, else on come his on. Team. Like, let's let's get something together. Let's go yeah. forward. Let's move on. Uh, next up, we have one from Opta Johan. Uh, if I can find it. It is Zidiac. 
believe I'm saying that Jed, right? Jednak. Jednak. There you go. Jednak. You really gave it some pronunciation. I tried. I, tried. Cool. I did try. Uh, the only player in World Cup history with three plus goals, all of which being from penalty kicks. Yeah, and he actually today helped stop Australia's longest ever World Cup losing drought. So hmm. finally get, get some points for the, uh, for the Socceroos. Etching the name in the history books there. Uh, up next, we do have Opta Joe with this France stat from today. 1998, Kylian Mbappe, first player to score a World Cup goal that was born after France's 1998 triumph. Uh, very impressive. Yeah, he's two years uh, younger than I am, so makes me feel really good about my uh, my soccer <laughs> skills. <laughs> it also kind of sits there and makes you wonder, like, hmm, what was I doing in 19? What, right, what was I doing what when was I was I, doing? I wasn't on the World Mbappe, Cup stage in right? 19, let me tell you that. Yeah. Oh, Oof. man. Uh, of course, the next one we have is the brilliant photo from Senegal Portland game. Uh, really do like this one. Came across. I know a few. I've seen Copa ninety tweeted out. I've seen a few other accounts pick it up as well. Just, I mean, kind of shows what the World Cup's yeah, all about. This is this is what soccer's supposed to be. So keep that in mind as everybody goes in place. And our last one from Opta Joe again, which actually I am going to update this one. There's been twenty three games now. But there have been no 0-0 draws in any of the 23 games at the 2018 World Cup so far. Last time that happened was 1954. Insanely that was, impressive. That was Before a, you ask, I don't remember that one. No, you weren't alive at that one. <laughs> I do. No, I don't. Okay, yeah, I don't. I don't. <laughs> None of us were alive at that one. But anyway, that is what we've seen for today's action. I'm sure we'll have even more coming for tomorrow as well. Absolutely. Yeah. Martin, have we had any good questions coming through today? Oh, we've had some good questions um, so actually, well, we had a comment from uh, Danny Coben, who says Hand was in an unnatural position. He's talking about the um, the Denmark Australia game, of course, and uh, he says handball. So that's Danny Coben's opinion. Um, he seems like a person that sees things very black and white. Yeah, uh, I don't know if we'd get along. <laughs> <laughs> Giovanni Botran asks, uh, "Is this going to be Messi's last World Cup?" He's going to be 35 um, in 2022. Yeah. But with a guy like Messi, I could see him hanging around the team. I don't know if he, he's definitely not going to be the Leo Messi that we know, though. I would be, I see, I, I would want to say, like, no, we won't see him again because I think he's just going to be too frustrated and realize that he's never going to have a team that he can properly play with. But at the same time, I, I, I see well, kind of what you're saying. Like, if he is, he might be a player coach role. Mm -hmm. uh, maybe something that he's trying to help nurture that younger generation, but he's still going to be seeing maybe a substitute time on the field. I don't know. He's a player that I could see playing until he's just bored and out of his mind going crazy. Uh, Frankie Garcia asks, favorite World Cup jersey? Each of us have a favorite World Cup jersey so far. I really like Switzerland home and... France away. Those are my two favorites. Okay. Uh, both the France jerseys for me. That's as surprising as it is. I so love England the Croatia home and England away. away. Oh, England uh. away though. Actually though, England away is beautiful. <laughs> no, in all seriousness, I'd have to say Colombia home uh, for me and uh, and Germany away. Germany away is a really good looking kit. It yeah. is. Uh, I have a question here from Waco, Texas Soccer Bros. Welcome back to the cast, uh, by the way. Uh, do you think Otamendi should have received a red card after the unnecessary kick towards Rakitic? Undoubtedly, yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah definitely uh, a, re a resounding yes. Everybody here in the Soccer.com office was absolutely shocked that he walked away with the yellow after that. Um, definitely not something you ever want to see in a, in a competition no. like this. No. Uh, is this from Canadian Beast? Great name there. Uh, is this going to be... Oh, excuse me. Sorry. Yes, the Journey Away jersey is awesome, Canadian Beast. Uh, but somebody else, who is it? Hazel Ortiz. Who thinks this is going to be Ronaldo's World Cup? It, I, is it has been so far. Um, is this going to be the best chance he has to actually win one? Yeah, and, Can, you know, interesting thing I was thinking about the other day was if, you know, let's say, say Portugal wins this World Cup. Ronaldo leads them. Maybe he wins the Golden Boot but scores a ton of goals. He won. Uh, he led them to Euro 2016 wins back-to-back -back international trophies along with obviously all of his club accolades that he's that he's collected back to back um, to back back to back to back for Real Madrid in the Champions League where does if, if Ronaldo and Portugal win the World Cup where does that leave Cristiano Ronaldo in the greatest of all time goat uh, race so 
I don't think many people right now coming into this World Cup have him in, say, their top three. Most people you talk to would still have, say, Pele, Maradona. More people would have had Messi from the current generation kind of getting into that top three. But if, if Ronaldo wins a World Cup, for me, he may even leapfrog Messi up into that, you know, to challenge me- the, it's, the it's historic gonna be, legends. Yeah, it's going to be hard if he actually brings home the most coveted trophy. But then again, it's like the last generation where a single player could win you a cup like that was Maradona's era. Mm -hmm. Since then, you haven't been able to see one player carry a team as much as we've seen Ronaldo carrying Portugal. And I think a lot of it is because Portugal realizes that he is as good as he is, and they're willing to play with him. And I think we haven't seen that from another team in a very long time, because you see a lot of other players' egos come into play, and it takes a lot of effort in that sense. I think Portugal have kind of figured, finally figured out the right formula to hopefully succeed with Ronaldo at the helm. Well, I think it's the same argument that you hear here in America with LeBron and Jordan, who's better. It really comes down to what you value. If you value play style, you value who you think is probably the best player, I think you're going to think Messi's a little bit better than Ronaldo and maybe not hold Ronaldo in such high regard. But if you're, you're a Jordan person and you really think that the best player is the person who wins the trophies, who gets it done for his team, I think you've got to put Ronaldo up in that top three and maybe even towards that number one spot. I know I know that's hard for a lot of people yeah. because he is a very polarizing figure both on and off the field. But I, I just think, if you, you know, if he wins a World Cup, you're going to look back on his career and he deserves to be up alongside those greats of the game. Yep. Um, he does. Both of them do. Um, but let us know your thoughts in the comments. We'd really like to see what you guys are interested in, who you think is going to be better. And if you think... Ronaldo winning a World Cup would basically solidify his one of, him as one of the top three all-time greats. Uh, but it's giveaway time. Talking of Cristiano Ronaldo, should we uh, give away yeah. uh, some boots? Some boots, yes. Actually, in honor of Kylian uh, Mbappe. Yeah. Kylian in Mbappe, honor of Mbappe's goal. goal today. <laughs> <laughs> in honor of Mbappe's goal today, we are going to give away a pair of the Mercurial Superfly from the Just Do It Pack, what he wears on field. Your code for the day is TMNT. Now, what, what's, the re- what's the reasoning behind that, call? Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. Who is? Uh, also, turtle power. <laughs> also, also Kylian Mbappe. There you go. So, make sure you guys go to soccer.com backslash France. Again, that is soccer.com backslash France. Enter the password TMNT for Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. And you guys could have a chance to win a pair of these uh, Nike Mercurial Superfly 6 from the Just Do It Pack. I just want to I just want to give a little uh, mention here because some people have asked uh, over the course of our shows that we've been doing so far that uh, about the jerseys that we've been wearing um, today all three of us are wearing some retro jerseys that are made by Copa um, they are available on soccer.com I chose to wear a Croatia one here in honor of their victory today I'm, I'm this, Australian uh, in honor of them not losing today. Uh, interesting number here oh, is Australia. it's beautiful it's Australia come on soccer and I just went for classic blue with France so if uh, in some cases we are starting in some cases we are starting to sell out of particular teams jerseys the current 2018 ones for example we are running very low on Mexico and some other teams we do have retro jerseys still available for pretty much every team at the World Cup. So um, go, out, go ahead to soccer.com to check out the selection. We'll leave a link in the comments as well. I do believe that wraps up just about everything. Uh, thank you guys for joining me today and being sharp dressed in our classic gear. Hopefully we'll be able to do it again tomorrow. And of course, there are some more games coming on the horizon. Make sure you guys watch all of those. Keep up with us, interact with us on social, comment on the live show, do whatever you guys want to do. It's a fun time. Anyway, I think that's all we have for you guys here from Soccer.com Live. We will see you all again tomorrow.